Now, I'm ordinarily not a blingy kind of guy, but recently something strange happened. I was experimenting with polished steel or silver, powder coating my 70 millimeter throttle body, and kind of spontaneously decided to try it in tarnished gold. And when I saw the finished result, I thought to myself, huh, what would it be like to do the entire intake manifold like that? Hey guys, how goes? Martin here. I know in the last video, the powder coating of the intake tube adventure, I promised that the next video would be the valve cover, but I changed my mind and tackled this intake manifold project first. It just made more sense for some stupid reasons. But the valve cover will be next after this, that's a promise. In my quest for an early spooling four or 500 wheel horsepower 5S GTE setup, I was hunting in junkyards for a suitable 70 millimeter throttle body, and I stumbled onto this beauty from a Lincoln LS V8. The LS actually had a Jaguar 3.9 liter engine, and this lightweight, completely no-nonsense design didn't have any unwanted ports, didn't need any block-off plates, and came with a double cam levered linkage for smoother and increased pedal travel. Of course, I weighed it. 606 grams, 1.34 pounds altogether. The other great thing about it is that it was easy to replace the bearings and add additional shaft seals to handle boost without leaking. Many aftermarket throttle bodies are actually poorly designed for handling boost, and I ditched an otherwise perfectly good new 70 millimeter BBK throttle body for this reason. The throttle cam was cut and re-welded to make it progressive so that there is much more precise control for the first 50% pedal travel, and in a high horsepower car, this is a much bigger advantage than you might think. In fact, I miss it with virtually every other car I drive, including best-selling OEM low horsepower cars like the 2009 Civic. I eventually found the voltage output specs for the throttle position sensor that came with it, and I was able to use that too. If you haven't seen the build video, Gandalf is optimized for the broadest torque range possible and retains the Tevis for early spool, but in a side feed intake manifold configuration for more even air distribution to the runners and for a particular air to water intercooling layout in the engine bay. The runners are from the 3SGELC Celica, which shared the same Tevis system as the 3SGTE, and with some help from a web board buddy, Snowrocker88, who had kindly offered to do the 3D flow modeling, I designed a new larger plenum. Snow Rocker was sent some precise measurements to help get accurate modeling representation of the runners. And then we played around with everything, including plenum size and shape, throttle body location and angles, and the effect of the Tevis in combination, until we had our winner. Then the trick was recreating the modeling design as closely as possible. I used 4-inch aluminum tubing from junked pickup truck drive shafts. The runner inlets were die grinded, dremeled, and hand sanded to improve airflow. Yes, yes, I said grinded. I use the term grinded when I'm using hand grinders or die grinders because the word ground doesn't make sense to me in this instance. Because unlike ground meat, the goal is not to make a big pile of ground metal. If your goal is to make a big pile of ground metal, go ahead and say to ground all you want. I'm making a manifold using grinders, discarding the ground metal. See what I mean? Hence, grinded. Repeat after me. I die grinded the runners and discarded the ground metal. Anyways, there is a half inch thick aluminum section underneath the throat for drilling and tapping the boost and vacuum lines. Now, TIG welding all of this to the cast aluminum runners does pose a challenge because its porosity and impurities can make for endless pinholes which need to be chased down and eliminated. Then came a lot more grinding and flap disking until the welds were mostly gone. Here is the real thing with the flow modeling design superimposed. The functionality of the design proved excellent, but there are still imperfections in the aesthetics, and we, you and I, are going to address that now, prior to powder coating. First, several layers of baked on old paint need to be sandblasted. Then those surface imperfections and waves can be eliminated by applying lab metal, baking, and sanding until the shape is perfect. For more details on either DIY sandblasting or lab metal application process, see some of my earlier videos in the powder coating section of my channel, and I'll add the links up on the right of the screen, right? Now, this intake manifold also poses a challenge as far as how we are going to get powder into all the corners and rotate it to get at all the parts underneath and see even coverage, etc. Hanging it on a wire on the large copper oven rack wasn't going to work. So I bought an engine stand, which came powder coated already, so we wouldn't have to strip it all down to metal. 
Plus, its wheels are all metal, too. And since I hope to also powder coat the block soon, this would be perfect. It was too wide and too long, so it needed some modding, plus a custom rotating section. First task was to cut the main axle tube to shorten the wheelbase and re-weld it so that it could fit into the powder coating oven, then shorten the adjustable length tube so that it could fit no matter how it was oriented. For the new rotating insert, I cobbled together some scrap aluminum tubing, along with some sturdy aluminum L-brackets and plate, drilled some holes for the slide lock hardware, drilled holes to accommodate the manifold, did a test fit, and we were ready to prep for coating. Once we had the shape we want, we sand down to a fine grit, and then give it a good wipe down with a lint-free cloth and denatured alcohol. The runner's main flange is taped off with high temp tape, then bolted up, but opted for temporary masking tape on the throttle body flange since it is in a good position to be removed carefully before it goes into the oven. How much do you want to bet that's the only time I drop that handle? After all the taping and mounting, I had to rewipe it all again because I touched it a lot after it was wiped. Looks like I win the bet, right? That was the bet, wasn't it? Applying a little compressed air can help remove any lint, but too much pressurized air can actually create a static charge buildup in the item, and we want to avoid that. Quick passes with a propane torch also helps. Into the booth, test out the gun, get the pedal ready, and we are coating. The first layer is Super Chrome 2. The strategy is to start with getting powder into all of the nooks and crannies, or Faraday cage areas, first, since there are so many of them on this item, and then we see what still needs powder after. So far, it is covering very nicely. As usual, this color goes on a dark charcoal, and we want to apply enough powder so that we don't see any color differences between areas. Time to rotate this thing carefully, as to not shake off any powder. And that successfully concludes the test of the rotisserie powder coating insert. Looks like I might be winning the battle with that handle, finally. Again, we are aiming for all the difficult areas between the runners first. A handheld LED light can also help expose any areas that need more powder. And now we tackle the remaining and most visible section of the manifold where most of the lab metal was applied. I need to apply enough powder to make all those lab metal spots disappear. And it's oven time! Luckily, I did remember to remove the masking tape on the throttle body flange before closing the door. The transformation is pretty cool to watch. and the chrome underlayer is done. It is one of the most unforgiving colors since every surface imperfection, like casting marks, seems amplified. Nevertheless, should be perfect for an underlayer. And we are going for gold. I think I want to go just a bit lighter on the gold coating than I did the throttle body. If we go too thick, the gold can tend towards orange. It is much easier to see the thickness of the gold powder over the chrome because any shiny areas that show through need more powder. As usual, the trick is knowing when to stop. Still see a few spots. I think that's it. I've got some adrenaline going, not gonna lie. Wait, did you guys catch it? I forgot something. I forgot the masking tape on the throttle body flange. No, it's not thumbs up quite yet. That's it, good job. Yes, everyone can see it.
I am thrilled. It's reminding me of something though. Can't quite put my finger on it. Oh my. I don't randomly name a lot of things, but this thing is gonna need a name. 3PO? MR2PO? 2PO? The valve cover is next, for sure this time. I promise it's no trick, although we are gonna trick it out a bit. Check out these other videos wherever they are. Like and subscribe. Ciao for now.